I cannot assume that, any, that somebody has any background about it. So I want to spend the half of my presentation time to explain what, what are the problem or what are some basic problems cognitive music theory. In the second part, I will come to two quantum approaches. So let me start immediately. Uh, we have three empirical questions. The first one is to make the distinction between consonant and dissonance. You see two intervals here, and I hope you can read these notes. What is consonant, what is dissonant, which one? First one, dissonant, second, consonant, or? First one, consonant, this is the second one. This is dissonant. That's the first problem. The second is a little bit more complicated to understand. And I will, later I will be concentrated on the second one. This is called static attraction. What you hear in a simple example is such a scale, is shown here. And after the scale was presented, you have to, to guess uh, what tone fits best to the whole scale. The C, the D, the F sharp, or, or, or so on. Right? And the third question, dynamic attraction, the resolution of a chord. Very slow, Bernstein, Richard Wagner. So this is a difficult problem because it, it cannot be treated in the standard Riemann, Riemannian music theory. Um, and this is a an, an, an challenge for, for, for a new approach for quantum approach or something. So let me come to the first experiment, the attraction experiment. Uh, our musical system has 12 tones. But they are not all used in, in, in a certain region, uh, piece in the normal case. In the normal case, in European or American music, we have such a diatonic scale, right? In Indian music, we have this famous ragas. They consist of five tones in, in, in many cases, or, or seven, also seven tones, right? That's different. So this is very important, the diatonic scale. This is a kind of context. We see this is a kind of context. And then the experiment goes as follows. The total context is presented. This relates to a diatonic scale in terms of a cadence, right? And then you listen either this tone or this tone, and you have to tell what fits best to the scale, right? This is the problem. And you judge, you have to judge this for attraction possible on, a, on, on some kind of Likert scale, 0 to 7 in my case. So and these are the results. These are the, the 12 tones are presented here. And the context is in the first case on the left hand side, the major scale, and then the second case, the minor scale. I will concentrate on the major scale. The blue, does it work? The blue curve here, these are the data, and the red one, this is the fit to a so called hierarchical model, I will explain in a moment. So, and what are the basic findings? The basic finding is that the seven tones of the diatonic scale have higher values of tonal attraction than the five tones which are not part of the five. These are the five tones that are not part of the scale. Right? That's the first finding. And the second is that the tones of the tonic triad, this is in the case of C major, C, E, and G, that say these tones uh, have, have higher values than the other tones of the scale. This is the basic finding, explanation, or standard explanation, is a Leonard's hierarchic model. Generativists in linguistics will like this model. Why? The model is that we have several levels. We, we have, for example, a chromatic level, all tones, Next, the scale level, the diatonic tones, then the triad level, C, E, G, then the plus 
the fifth level C and G, and the highest is the, is the C level. And when you have, we have to decide, let's say, the D, what is the attraction value of the D, then you can't, it appears in two levels, it has an attraction value corresponding to two, and the C has five, it's higher, right? This is a very simple hierarchical model where you can, I would not say explain, I would say describe the data. Why describe? The point is that the levels are pure stimulations. They are not in independently motivated. The data motivate the levels. There are no other reasons why, why we use this level. And there is a real problem with this that deals with the minor scales. This model does not work so nice with the minor scales. And it also has problems with non-European or non-American uh, scales, like, like the Indian Raga. So for this reasons, I think this, prob this model is problematic. Right? So now I come to uh, quantum models of total attraction. And my motivation for being interested in music is symmetry. In music, you have symmetries. And as a physicist, you know uh, we have symmetries in quantum physics. The symmetry is the most basic of the most basic principle. Physics is a theory of symmetries in some case. And this is a citation by Steve Weinberg's universe is an enormous direct product of representation of symmetry codes, right? And then, of course, we can ask, do we find symmetries in quantum cognition? And what com comes into mind, vision, translation, invariance, but I do not know a quantum cognitive model of, 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 of vision. No idea. And then comes m music, and then you have the transposition invariance. And that means if you have a piece, let's say, in C major, and you to, uh, transpose it into another key, let's say G major, then you get another piece of music, other notes, but it sounds very similar. The relations are exactly the same. You do not even hear, hear uh, a, a difference between the piece in C major and G major. And you can do it with the other 12 keys, or with the other element keys. And then you see that you have symmetries in music. So, and now we should make a remark about computational music theories. That the background is, is, is clear. There are structural approaches in music theory, and they have to they deal with the symmetries. And the famous uh, author of this kind of approach is Guerrino Mazzola, and he in investigated uh, the, 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 the uh, change from C major, let's say, into, in, into a, another key. What's, what happens in this case is what possibilities are existing in these cases. The other approach is a Bayesian approach to, to, to music that deals with, with uh, probabilities. Uh, of course, and the, the famous also in this field is David Temperley. And it's clear that music perception, or according to this author, it's clear that music perception is largely probabilistic in nature. And then the question, of course, is where do the probabilities come from? Where do the probability comes from? And I think quantum, quantum models can give a good explanation where the probabilities come from. So, and another point is that um, the advantage of quantum theory is that it combines both approaches, probabilities and symmetries. And then you can say where the probabilities come from when you combine the structural with the probabilistic approach. So now, uh, I have some time, yes. I come with a simple model, uh, a qubit model of of, of total attraction. And of course, I do not need to explain what is the qubit state. These are two 
possible representation. First, in the case I have a Hilbert space with real numbers only, then you have this Bloch circle, right? All states can be represented within this Bloch circle, or in the case where I have complex numbers, then every vector can be represented in this way, and this goes points to, 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 to a point in this uh, three-dimensional Bloch, Bloch sphere, right? This is standard, I think. I should explain this further. So my point now is that this famous circle of fifths that is used in, in, in music, the 12 tones, and then you, you get the representation of the tones in this way. It starts with the C, next comes the B, the B, the A, and so, and so on. And my point is that this circle of fifths can be interpreted as a Bloch circle, right? And that means the tones are vectors in such a two-dimensional Hilbert space, right? And then I can calculate, that's what I will explain, how well using the projection of the tones on the context tone, using the projection, let's say the D of the context tone, that's the C, I can calculate the length of the projection and the square of this length is the attraction value. Then I can have this, this simple idea. Right? So circle of fifths and then block square. It's the same thing. I use it and you can see that. So now it comes a little bit a motivation why that should work. Right? I will make this Short, right? The motivation is we have invariance under transposition. That means uh, what matters in this case is the cyclic group C12, because I have 12 tones. Right? And then I should consider the generators of this group. There are four generators of this cyclic group C12, and this is when I enumerates is from 0 to 11, it's the addition of, of 1, that is a chromatic scale in both directions. So I have two generators go to higher, go to lower tones, and I have this circle of fifth going seven half tone steps. Further. And when I use this, the second generator, then I get this nice, nice picture that the tones of the diatonic case, uh, diatonic scale are all connected, right? I do not have this, of course, when I have used the chromatic scale. And who, who knows, there was the theory of maple maps and such things, you know, so this would be the preferred representation for, for complex sets. These are convex sets. The, di the tones of the diatonic scale build a convex set. And, and this is what I want. So, and now next step to come to the blosphere is to use it, to use the representation theory in the sense of quantum theory. So I have to look for the irreducible representation of the real, of the real Hilbert space, and then it's, it's obvious in this case with real numbers, I have for the generator such a rotation in, in, in this real Hilbert space. And the rest is clear. I can calculate by projection. I can calculate the, the profiles. OK. Who likes pictures can have a look at that. So, so and now I come to the, the data. This is uh, what I co call a kernel function. This is an attraction profile relative to a chosen one single target tone, let's say the tonic class is C in, in, in my case. And then I get this blue curve, and the other curve is in a, another model, the so-called interval cycles proximity. To explain it shortly, what is the interval cycle? I take the number six, this is the three tones of C F sharp, and from C to F sharp is the interval, and I take this interval two times, then I come back to the original tone. 
and the number of times I have to repeat the interval to come back to the original tone is this ICP, right? And it is uh, lowest for, uh, or, 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 yes, low, lowest for this ICP, there so it's two, right? And it's highest for, for uh, the half tone, tone step or for the, for the fifth, right? So, and then I can use this kernel functions in order to take, to, to, to calculate the tonal, uh, the tonal attraction value for a whole scale, I take the average of all tones. Okay. Given the tonal context, the pitch profile is calculated by averaging over all tones of the context. So, and when I do that, for our data, our comprehensive Kessler data, I get uh, this in the case of a major scale and the lower in the case of a minor scale. And the correlation is 0 0.8. That means it explains half of the variance. Or in the minor case, it's, it's 0.75, almost half. It goes without any parameter. So, but that's not an excellent result. I have to think what is, yeah, so something must be wrong. Right? How can I, can I in, improve that? And that is this, 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 this second part, the gauge model. So in the gauge, gauge, gauge model is gauge model, right? In the gauge model, I have to introduce a spatial and local variable, spatial model. Variable, and I take it with the Schrödinger equation, standard Schrödinger equation with the, with the space variable here for the Hamiltonian, right? And then in the simplest case, without any forces, as in this case, only the, the square of the momentum, then I get a plane wave as the solution. Right? Uh, and with some, some border conditions uh, and the superpositions of both waves in both directions, I get such a standing wave that's described here. And one, one border, border condition is that at the context, uh, the amplitude should be maximum. The context is our tonic class, you see, then the amplitude should be maximum. And then I, I get this this uh, wave. So, and then let, let's say that we, we, we have, we made a choice that the, the tonic number zero is chosen and then I get for the uh, probability density, I get this distribution and this exactly the, what, what we got before in the qubit. This, this, this is expected, of course, right? Okay, and now, of course, we should speculate a, a little bit about the spatial variable. What, what does it mean? Does it make sense? Or what, where could it come from? This is a speculation. Of course, this is speculation only. And what we have to, to consider in this case is the cochlear in the, in the ear, you know what it is? Yes? I didn't know it before, but I have to learn it. So we have to, to consider the cochlear and the present theory, how tonal perception works, is by, by a traveling wave. This is a result by George von Bekesy, who got a Nobel Prize for this 30 years or 50 years. Years ago, the so Helmholtz, the theory of, of, of Helmholtz with resonance is wrong. It's a, it's a traveling wave in the culture. And then, of course, uh, we cannot say that it describes this traveling wave in quantum, quantum definition. What we describe is rather a mapping from this wave to the auditory uh, cortex. Right? 
And another speculation is that this has to do with uh, description as given in zero sort of generation neural network. It relates to that for music, there's a work by Edward Large about this. It's the most popular writer in this field. And I think also what Patrick Sutton and Akachu did in this regard is highly relevant for my, my uh, gauge theory approach. So, this was the first step. Now I come to the, to the gauge transformation. In principle, I can do it in two different ways. Either by, by, by introducing phase parameters. That's what I did in the earlier talk in, in Toronto. But now I do it in another way that's closer to general theories of relativity. That we have a deformation of this x by, of the spatial component by a function gamma. We introduce a, a nonlinear deformation function and see what happens. We go into the, the Schrodinger equation, right? And then that is our Schrodinger equation. And then we see that we get uh, the Hamiltonian in case we in, introduce inorganization of all this little mathematical exercise. We get three terms for the Hamiltonian in, in, in this case. One term is, is the minus of the second derivation according to the spatial component. And this is the kinetic energy, of course. Another term is this one, more complicated. And this can be called, according to my colleague Peter Van Graben, he says that looks like a magnetic, magnetic interaction function. And a third is, 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 is a potential function. Okay? So we get three, three terms. And, and this is the original, yeah, this is the original uh, function, kernel function from the new, new case. And this is the deformation, right? You see it's deformed in, in, in this way. And this deformation introduces uh, this three false terms. And then, we have to look uh, for local gauge invariance, and I will not speak about that. That's a little small, and it's really very complicated, and we are not completely successful with this. That's uh, a massive, a massive for future. Yeah. So now uh, the comparison, the comparison with the data. These are the, ma it's the major data, and these are the data in the case of minor scales. And what I should explain, but I did not, I, I forgot it. No, we have no real pa uh, independent parameter. We can fix all parameters. It looks like a parameter, but this is fixed by the condition that for the tree tone it should be zero. This is when the amplitude should be minimum for the tree tone. And the other condition is for the tonic, it should be maximum. And then we can also oh then we can fix this to parameters, right? And only the, 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 the degree of nonlinearity that we have chosen a four instead of a two or a six, it must it must be symmetric, so it can be only two, four, six, eight, nine, eight, not nine, ten. Right? This is our decision because this fits the best with the data. So we, have, we have one parameter. And this is very good for one to, to have one parameter only. And then we get a very high correlation in most cases. These are really predictions. This is not stability. These are no data things, right? So then uh, we see that the Musical forces, this three force term, produce derivations from the neutral profile. This is the neutral profile, the circle, and then in this case, the, 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 the forces are positive, and in this case, the forces are negative. You can set the circle. Okay, and then we can calculate uh, the potential uh, density function of the total. 
potential energy that is this core, and then we see the tonic that is here or here is an attractor, and we see triton is like a magnetic, magnetic trap, and then when we take uh, the total energy, this is this curve, right? The, the total energy is proportional to the square uh, to, to, to to the probability profile. But you see, we, so we get in some sense we get an interpretation of the probability distribution in terms of this uh, density function function of the total energy. Okay, conclusions is uh, cognitive models of music should integrate structural factors which are based on symmetries with factors of uncertainty. And these are quantum probabilities. Uh, symmetry and invariance gives us all quantum cognitive approach. The third point is uh, that the example of total attraction shows how cognitive theory of expectation, this is a cognitive theory of expectation, and there is a famous author in music theory, Meyer, who says, the expectation form our emotions. Without expectations, no emotions. There is a theory of emotion that is based on the expectations. What tone we expect. So expectation is very important, a very important element of music theory and this gives an approach to tonal attraction. Okay. And you also can think about innateness in, in this connection that makes sense when you consider reason writings by, by Kromhansel that we have this innate kernel function that's either the ICP or our deformated kernel function from, from quantum cognition. This is innate in some sense. And what is learned is then the total scale, the underlying scale. Right? Okay, so what? Thank you. Questions? Uh, uh, so, I'm, I might have missed this, but um, what did you change in the model to go from major to minor scales? What did I skate from? The change to go from major to minor for the scales. We ended up with two best fit lines, one for the major scale yes. and one for the minor yeah. scale. And what I didn't see... It There's is only a, a minimal change in this case. In, in, in the major case, we have in context C, E, G. Mm -hmm. And in the minor case, you have C, E flat. G. And this makes a difference. So Nothing else. So you're coming from the outside. Instead of E, I take E flat. I didn't understand. Did you explain why major is major and minor is minor or not? Will you just explain that? No, I, ex I can explain only if there are empirical data, both that there's a context that's what I presented here was was the cadence in C major. major. Then there are also are cadences in C minor. That sounds different. Right? But what, what, why is they perceived this type of emotion, not another one? Because before the experiment, a cadence was presented. Either C and G, C, F, A. Yeah, that is a traditional one. way of looking on that. And so, I think the question might be, what, what, why do we tell children that major keys are happy and minor keys are sad? Right, but... No, no that's, that's not true. That's not true. That's isn't it. <laughs> <laughs> there was a recent article, I had a recent article in, in science about its major is, is makes you happy in my world. That's simple nonsense. You have in German, it's, 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 it's the counter example is in it's a German piece, I can say it only in German, unter dem Lindenbaum. It sounds, makes you not happy. Right? It, it, that's a, 
that's that's not so simple. That's not so simple. That's that's that the simple chord is that or, or, or not? It is a sequence of chords. Yes, it it it's a sequence. The most famous uh, composer is Mozart, right? That's that's that, that, that you, you have. A, a movement from major to minor, or from minor to major, and this man makes the effect. Not a single chord. A single chord uh, is simple or not. So I think, Positive uh, or negative. So I think we should end with Mozart at this point. <laughs> so shall we? Uh, we started this session uh, five minutes late, so I think it's okay to start five minutes past for the next session. I'm sure that uh, any of the speakers of this session would be very, very happy to receive your questions during the coffee break.